Hello and welcome back to Kim Reads. So I want to do another American Girl book where I read all the stories. Uh, this one I want to read is Samantha. Her year is 1904. And here are her friends and family. And so first book is Meet Samantha. And chapter one, Jesse, Samantha, the voice broke through the summer afternoon like a crack. The leaf suddenly quiet, oh, old oak tree suddenly rustled and dropped a squirming bundle of arms and legs. Samantha Parkington tumbled out of a tree. Samantha, you're really dumb, the voice continued. It was coming from a hole in the hedge that separated Samantha's house from Eddie Ryland's. You're so dumb, you don't even know how to climb a tree. Samantha glanced at her scraped knee and bleeding knee and looked pain. Not because of the knee, but because the voice was out again. She glanced at its owner with a look that could have frozen water in July. Go away, Eddie. But Eddie's round, sticky face didn't go away. You're so dumb, you probably think three times four is twelve, he said. Eddie, Samantha looked disgusted, three times four is twelve. Well, anyway, you're so dumb. That was enough for Samantha. Eddie, she said, if you don't get out of here right now, I will take your entire beetle collection from behind the shed and put in the offering plate at the church on Sunday. She paused to be sure he was listening, and I'll tell your mother you did it. Eddie's eyes grew wide. He pulled his mouth into a frog face and left to find a safer hiding place for his beetle collection. Samantha examined her knee. The bleeding had stopped, but her stocking was badly torn. She could picture how Grand Mary would look when she saw it. Grand Mary's eyes had a soft, worn light when they looked at Samantha, but her face could be very stern when she talked about growing up. Discipline, Grand Mary always said, is what turns girls into ladies. Samantha the tugged at the hole in her stocking, but she couldn't hide it. The taffeta bow, bow had all her dark hair dropped over her forehead. Yes, this was a job for Jessie. Samantha hurried up the walk and climbed the porch two steps at a time. At the front door, she slowed down. If there was any noise at the front door, Elsa might come. Elsa was the new maid. She was always grumpy, and S Samantha didn't want to listen to a lecture now. Luckily, the door was quiet. No one saw Samantha run all the way to the third floor. There at the end of the hall was the sewing room, and in the corner sat Jessie. Yards and yards of soft pink material tumbled around her, and the sewing machine clicking away as her feet pressed the treadle back and forth. She hummed it for its rhythm as her fine brown hands guided the cloth past the flashing needle. Jessie made clothes for the household. She was working on a new dress for Grand Mary, but she stopped as Samantha came through the door. Oh, Miss Samantha, look at you, Jessie said as she s stood and turned. Jessie's large, fl large floating apron swirled over the baskets of thread and laces rest on the floor. What have you been up to? No, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Here you are, nine years old, almost a lady, still getting to mischief like a ragamuffin. What will your Grand Mary say? Samantha folded her hands and looked at the floor until Jessie was quiet. The mild scolding was a pro small price to pay for the help she knew Jessie would give her. Already, Jessie had brushed the grass and dust from her hair. Now she checked Samantha's dress for tears and stains. She spotted the torn stocking. Take off those shoes and stockings right now. Does your feet knee hurt? Asked Jessie. No, Jessie, it's all right. I'd rather not have it to explain it to Grand Mary. Jessie smiled and reached for her sewing basket. Samantha found a small, clean rag and, wet for, and wet it from the water pitcher. She spotted her injured knee while Jessie sat to repair the damaged stocking. As Samantha looked around the room, she noticed a piece of jelly biscuit on the floor. She must have dropped it the day before. Three ants had found it. She was about to tell Jesse when she noticed two more ants were on their way. It would be fun to see how many would come. 
Samantha sighed loudly. It must be awfully boring to grow up. To be grown up. She said. Jesse laughed softly. Well, that depends. It depends a lot on the person. Now you, Miss Samantha, I don't think you'll have to be worried about being bored even when you're grown up. There were seven ants on the jelly biscuit now. I'll bet Cornelia isn't bored, said Samantha. Jessie laughed again. No, I don't imagine Miss Cornelia is very often bored, she said. Cornelia was a friend of Samantha's favorite uncle. She was pretty and dark-haired. She laughed easily. Anyone could see that she liked Uncle Guard a lot. But Samantha didn't think Cornelia was right for Uncle Guard. She thought somebody like Alice Roosevelt, the president's daughter, would be better. Alice Roosevelt did the most exciting things, and the newspapers were always talking about her. Is Uncle Guard going to marry Cornelia? asked Samantha. That's none of our business, Jessie said firmly. And children shouldn't ask such questions. Samantha grumbled softly. A minute ago, I was almost a lady. Now I'm a child again. Twelve ants were on the biscuit now. Three were on their way. Uncle Guard is a spy, you know, Samantha said. Miss Samantha, Jesse's head shot up in surprise. Where do you get such foolish ideas? Well, he should be a spy, Samantha went on. He's so handsome and brave and everyone would just fall in love with him. He would get their secrets and they'd be so in love with him they wouldn't even care. I think you'd better keep such ideas to yourself, Jessie said as she looked closely at the hole she was mending. You've made quite enough trouble for one day. There were 19 ants on the jelly biscuit. Jessie, did you know my mother and father? Samantha asked. Jessie spoke gently. You know I didn't, child. The accident happened in the boat accident when you were just five. You know I didn't come to work for your grandma until you were seven. Samantha had known that. Asking had been really been wishing. She touched the socket, the locket pinned to her dress. Inside, there was a small gold heart, was a picture of her mother and father. She would have loved to have heard Jessie talk about them. When Jessie told stories, she made everything sound like magic. Jessie would have made Samantha's parents seem like a prince and princess. Tell me about New Orleans, Jessie, please. Jessie picked up a piece of silk for the sleeve of Grand Mary's dress. Her musical voice began to tell about a place where, flower, where flowers bloomed in the winter. A place where there were huge white mansions and balconies made of iron that looked like lace. She talked about the spicy shrimp and uh, music and dancing in the street. And the best part was everything said Jesse was true. She didn't have to make up stories about faraway places. Her husband, Lincoln, was a porter on the train that ran to New Orleans. Lincoln had brought home wonderful tales of the places he'd seen and the people he'd met, and he never forgot Samantha. She had a scrapbook full of colorful postcards he sent her from all his trips. Sometimes he brought her pralines from New, from New Orleans, brown sugary candy crowded with sweet pecans. Jesse and Lincoln made Samantha's world wide and wonderful. An hour easily passed with Jessie's soft voice carrying Samantha to dreamlike places. And that's the end of that chapter. See you later.